Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Earlier today, I came across this post on Facebook, and it really caught my attention because it's something that I talk to people about probably once a month, maybe more, and that's whether or not you should put comments in your code, and if you should, when should you put them in, how much should you put? And my usual answer to this is comments suck. Don't put in comments unless they're absolutely necessary. And then whenever I tell people this, I get a lot of pushback. And I just kind of want to go through and explain the reasoning there and then go over the situations where I'd say comments are a good thing, which there are a couple cases. They're just rare. So what I want to do is just go over a piece of code. I just dug around until I found something in an asset that I had that was really heavily commented to the point where it would drive me crazy if it were my own code. And it's not to say anything bad about the um, the project or you know the asset. The asset's awesome, the code works great. It's just the style drives me personally a little bit nuts with uh, lots of comments. And I can also understand putting a ton of comments in something that you're putting up on the asset store because people on the asset store really kind of want that. But in general, in a normal project with a bunch of experienced or even less experienced developers, it's really bad, I think. And that's just because it clutters the hell out of the code. It makes it unreadable. And again, it hides, or it, I guess it covers up bad code. So when are the situations when you should use comments? In my opinion, I only want to see comments when you're explaining why you're doing something and you're explaining why because it's not obvious and not intuitive. I don't want to know, you know a comment that, hey, dealing damage to an enemy because he got hit by a bullet. What the hell? That should be obvious. We don't need a comment for that. Now, if you're putting in um, some special little subset of code because you need it for PlayStation 4 only and this little chunk is like uh, fixed for a PlayStation bug, comment that, right? It's a special edge case where the code doesn't really make sense. It's not obvious why you're doing the thing, but, and you wouldn't notice and you wouldn't catch it just going through, stepping through debugging and, and kind of digging in. So comment when you're doing things that are either abnormal or, you know, something that's not obvious and intuitive, or when you're doing something that's um, really complicated, like a, a special formula that everybody isn't going to know. So don't comment like getting the direction from one point to another. You're subtracting vectors and normalizing. That's obvious stuff and you could probably put in a method for that anyway. Um, but do comment if you're going over some special business specific algorithm or if you have business rules in there that are very particular to your organization you know, and you just have to explain them there because somebody coming from outside wouldn't know that they exist and wouldn't know that they need to be there. So now let's just jump into um, some of this code where I saw just a ridiculous amount of comments to the point where it drove me nuts. And I just want to show you how I would uh, how I would do this slightly differently. So here, again, amazing pack. I love it. Nothing against the pack, nothing against the code. It's just the comments that drive me a little crazy here. So if you look at the update, this update method is for some thrusters that uh, go on the back of a spaceship, right? And you can see there's pretty much a comment over every single line explaining what every single thing is doing. And um, I kind of understand why they're doing it. Again, it's an asset store project, but it's also, um, not super obvious what they're doing on everything and that's because this method's a little bit long it's not it, it should be extracted right this is uh where are we at 91 to 149 this this update method is way 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 too long so there's a reason they're putting in comments which is to hide up you know what i would call bad code where it's just too long and it could easily just be refactored into smaller methods. So let's do that now. All right, so let's go through this again. I wanna take a look right here at this first chunk and here it's just checking to see if we have a light, if we do, then it's adjusting the intensity based off of the number of particles. So the first thing I do is just extract this. So just select it, hit control period and call this um, adjust light for particle system. Simple. 
Uh, we don't need to know that. Obviously, we're checking to see if the cache light's not null. And here, we're setting the intensity based off number of particles. Um, so we may call this a just light for number of particles. So I'd rename this adjust light intensity. There we go. I-N-T-E-N. Oh, spelled that wrong. Intensity. And get rid of that comment. So now we have a very simple named method that does exactly what we want it to do, and it's kind of self-explanatory. Adjust the light intensity for a number of particles. Now I check to see if the thruster is active, and we do whatever this chunk of code is doing. The first thing I do is just extract this um, and call this update active thruster. Spelling problems today. And then I jump in here and go over this code. So here we're checking to see if the audio source is muted. Yeah, if mute, then unmute the audio. Okay. Um, we don't need comments for any of these. Yeah, we know if the audio source is muted, we're unmuting the comment. Yeah, I just get rid of that. Totally useless because it's it's easy to read right here. If if mute, unmute. Um, if the audio volume is lower than the sound effect volume, so you're just checking to see if the volume is less than the, that, then we're increasing the volume. So again, what I do here is um, extract this out. Let's go increase audio volume, um, what do we call it? To sound effect volume. And get rid of that, get rid of that. Of course, we'd also really wanna cache these audio sources. There's no reason to be calling git component, but we're not cleaning that up. This is just about comments. Okay, um, and actually, uh, you know what I'd do is pull this chunk of code too, because here, obviously, if it's muted, when we're increasing the volume, we just are going to unmute it right here. So I just pull that into there, because we'd have to unmute it to increase the volume. Nice and obvious what it's doing. Um, and then if the particle system's intact, it is, what, what are we doing here? Enabling the particle system. Okay, let's extract this nice and easy. Enable particle system. Or in, let's call this enable thruster cached particle system. There we go. So we don't need a comment on a null check. Everybody should know what that is. And here we don't need a comment either. Now you could possibly put a comment here that you're doing this because you can't modify the emission there. But I don't think it's necessary either because as soon as somebody if somebody really went in and tried to mess with this and tried to change it, they'd see the error anyway and they'd learn something new. Okay, so now I just go back and we have adjust light intensity for number of particles. If active, update active. Update active does increase audio volume and enable thruster cast particle system. In fact, with, with it doing just this little amount of stuff, I'd probably just pull that out, get rid of that, and then just put it right here. So these are the two things we do if the thruster system is active. And now it's down to two lines instead of whatever it was, like 15 or some crazy number of lines. And it's a lot easier to read, right? Increase audio volume, enable thruster cache particle system. And if you want to see how those work, you just look in there, you know what it's doing based off the method name. So the next part was the else. So if it's not active, what do we do here? We're checking to see, like this comment doesn't even match with this line. This is another problem with comments that I have is that they always are wrong. There's there's never been a project that I looked through with lots of comments where I didn't find a significant number of comments that just weren't correct. So this comment right here really would like apply up here. And then this would be a comment you know, following the existing system. This would be a comment like, hey, if the volume is uh, greater than zero you know, or greater than 0.1, so let's just delete that comment. We don't need it. And um, I mean, I guess we may have needed it when we had you know, 15 lines above because then we need to we get to the else and we don't know what the hell is there because this method is just too long. So here we go, let's fade this out. So we've got, if the volume is greater than zero, reduce the volume, otherwise mute it. So again, select it all, extract, um, reduce volume, 
And, um, how, how do we want to call this? Um, we want to name this something because we're not reducing it all the way to zero uh, per frame until muted. There we go. And then here we've got another set of code that's actually doing exactly the same thing as the enable except setting it to false. So here I wouldn't even uh, create another method. I just go into here, make this a boolean, uh, bool enable, and I would call this, instead of enable, just call it toggle. Toggle thruster particle system. Copy that and we'll go back up here and here I just set it to true. Copy that and paste it right there with the value of false. Oh, and this is toggle. It didn't get renamed. There we go. And we don't even need that. So now our update method, in my opinion at least, is comment free, easier to understand, easier to read, and just all around personal opinion, better. So when I say don't comment ever and comments suck. I mean, again, comments that are telling you what's happening. Not not comments that are telling you why, but comments that tell you like, this is doing this. If it has to tell you that, the method is probably doing too much and the method should be named better. The variables probably just need to be named better. Um, and that's kind of all there is to it. Just getting these things, like I said, ideally I want to have it clean, minimize all the extra stuff and make it super simple to just read line by line. And personally, I don't know about you guys, but for me, reading this is a whole lot easier than reading a 50 line chunk of code. And if I care about the specifics of how any one step is done, I can just go into that one step and read that. And again, much smaller, much easier to understand. So I hope this is helpful and kind of explains my hate for comments. Again, I've seen a lot of really, really terrible ones. I didn't want to go over those. Uh, the, the worst are the ones where it's a, you know, a page and a half at the top of history about, hey, this thing was created 13 years ago by this guy at this date for some project that doesn't exist anymore. And then 30 other things down there with copyrights and all kinds of other crap just bloat the crap out of the file and make it so every time you open a code file you have to scroll down a page or two. Those are the worst. Definitely hate those. Although I know sometimes they're legally mandated or mandated by company policies that I can't stand. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have you know your own opinions on this, feel free to comment down below. Be happy to have a little discussion about it. Thanks for watching.